All right, welcome back to Winner's Machine Shop. I'm Shane. This is my shop. Uh, today we're going to be resurfacing a uh, flathead cylinder head of a four-cylinder 8N tractor. Um, and I want to take you through the steps. I want to take you through a uh, series of operations, the setup, uh, setup for rigidity, uh, setting up the tools, you know, to get the best results that we possibly can. Um, and then we'll get some milling action. And I'll also go into why I've selected the machine to do it on that I have selected to do it on. A um, couple different options in this shop to do it. Um, feel the machine that I picked is probably the best option. So I'll go over that in a minute here. I'll get you over to the workbench. We'll take a peek at the cylinder head and just go into a little detail there uh, and then get it on the machine and start machining it. So hang tight, bring it right back. Thanks. All right, guys, so this is the head. Uh, let's see, I got you set up on this little cast iron surface plate, uh, which for our intents and purposes should work just fine. Uh, you can kind of see the top here. It's been, uh, I don't know if it's been hit with a cookie wheel. It kind of looks like maybe like one of the roll lock cookie wheels, Scotch Bright wheels, at some point in its life. Um, there's some minor imperfections here and there. There's some sealer. <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting. You can actually see down in here. This would be the uh, the original milling marks from the Ford factory. And if you watch uh, A Bomb 79, you kind of, he, uh, him and Abby just went to the Henry Ford Museum and they actually had a planer mill set up. I believe that had the cylinder blocks in it. But this would have been set up about the same way, a dozen or so of these. Uh, you know, probably. Probably located on ground pins you know, that would go in your holes that were, you know, uh, machined to some accuracy at that point. Um, and then, you know, clamped on these machine flat surfaces on this side and this side. You can see there's some over here. Right here. And then just run through a batch. Um, these are no longer anywhere near <laughs> the same height from the, the deck surface. Um, so we can't really do that, but I do have a plan. I'm going to go over it. Um, first thing I need to do is machine these and with the head sitting flat. I just need to get these kind of on the same plane, uh, perpendicular to the mating surface. Okay. And you can see, let me just slide this guy. You can kind of see. Now here on the top of these um, flat surfaces that you would likely locate off of, that's likely why they're there. Um, you know that the metal's been upset over the years for some reason or another, and these aren't perfect flat. So we need to do that first, and I'll show you why. Um, all right, if I set this on these, okay. See how it's rocking? That's going to introduce some kind of chatter in our piece. Um, yeah, I can get both of these flats on this little plate. See how that's kind of rocking? Now the other side of that, where it's upset, has a tendency to make uh, the back side at the base higher. So if I put a square on there. You can see, you know, that sucker is off quite a bit. Let me move this back here. All right, so reason that you want to do those first, okay? When you set this up on your mill, you want this thing to be in its resting position 
about where it needs to uh, to end up, okay? Because when you end up strapping this, you're going to introduce all kinds of tension and all kinds of uh, variables for this thing to shake loose and either cause chatter or, like I said, cause the thing to shake loose. So the first thing we need to address is, is these parts that are going to be against the table. <clears throat> all right. So that's how we're going to set that part up. Uh, after we machine it, let me just spin this guy. I'm kind of working around the camera here, so it's, it's a little difficult. Uh, after we machine it, we're going to take two of these cheap angle blocks. I'm not going to lie, they're cheap. Uh, now, even when it's straight perpendicular, these aren't level, so I have to use shim stock and shim kind of the pads that it isn't contacting. Um, now these are more for stability than anything. Kind of like a, a kind of heavy duty kickstand. All right. If we hook this up, if we set this thing up, let's see if I can back you up a little bit here. <clears throat> if we were to set this up with, with this in the condition it's in, you're going to cause all these stresses in here. You're going to put stress in the head. Um, it's going to be hard to get it located in with the head of the milling machine uh, so that you do make a nice straight pass. So <clears throat> the idea being having strap clamps, you know, probably three strap clamps on the top. Um, two smaller ones down here and this just bolted through the plug hole probably with a piece of plastic or something and the off chance it would gall the threads for the spark plug hole it shouldn't but it's not a risk i'm willing to take so uh that's the game plan we're going to get this thing tight down located where it wants to be and then ever so slightly snug these uh probably tighten to the table first um just kind of maybe sequence them in a little bit so we're not, you know, pulling this thing out of whack. Uh, that should cause it to to locate, you know, in the in in this plane, uh, perpendicular to the spindle, and I guess to the table. Um, so we just have to worry about our side to side. Um, so that's the idea there. The reason I want to do it this way is so that I don't have chatter. Um, and I can take as very little off as possible because, uh, you know, there's other variables that play with a cylinder head. You have to worry about your uh, piston to head clearance. You have to worry about your valve to head clearance. So we can't take that much off. We literally just want to dust this thing uh, to true it up. All right. <clears throat> In my opinion, when doing a cylinder head, you don't you don't want it super smooth. I like to have just a little bit of my mill mark showing through, just uh, enough to catch a nail, maybe. Um, not like a file, you know. <laughs> it doesn't need to look like a file. Just enough that it can bite into the gasket. Um, this is likely going to be done. It's likely going to have the copper gasket sealer sprayed on then with the head gasket. I'm not sure, but either way, you can see even the factory, even the factory edge here. Let me tilt you down a little bit. Zoom in. Even this factory edge here, this factory cut, you can kind of tell is there's just a little bit of roughness to it, and that that aids in getting that gasket to stay put. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring my cutter over that I'm using because that needs to be set up. If you've ever used uh, one of the Headmaster cutters, uh, a heck of a process on adjusting all the inserts on those. We're going to basically do that with uh, the face mill we're going to be using for this. And a lot of this is pretty critical. Uh, 
for one, this is seven inches. I'm zooming back out. The other out. <laughs> this is seven inches here to here, and the biggest face mill I currently have uh, for any mill is a six inch. So it's going to need to overlap, you know. So we'll. Uh, if the setup's not right, that's going to cause some problems for us, right? So all that has to be right. Uh, just like anything else, just like building a house, you got to have a good foundation. If you're doing paint work, you got to have good prep work. Uh, so that's basically what we're doing here. We're getting everything prepped so that it can be uh, effectively utilized to end up with the best results possible. Um, I really wanted to do this. I just pick you up here for a minute. I really wanted to do this on the metal planer. Maybe I'll pick you up. Which oddly enough is also uh, the same one that's in the uh, Henry Ford Museum, the Putnam metal planer. I thought it was pretty cool. I'd actually but really like to get out there so I can check out the uh, power down feed mechanism and everything because I'd like to mimic the original uh, if I ever decide to set it back up with it the machine didn't come with it the you know ratchet balls or lever or uh, lead screw or anything like that but there are provisions for it so I think that's that's a project down the road um, the K&T I've done things like this before on a horizontal universal mill uh, you know, like that. Again, forgive the mess. I'm getting it cleaned up. It just, it's been, it's been, there's a lot of stuff coming in here in the last couple of days, weeks. Uh, yeah, I'm sorting it out. But yeah, the uh, reason I don't like using that is you're moving up and down with your saddle, and there's a lot of weight in that. And that machine doesn't have that much wear, but it's enough that you're going to see it if there is a little deviation. Uh, and there's a lot less risk of that on. The HBM because that whole table just rides on those super strong box ways. Uh, it's leveled out nice, and I just think it's going to do. There's there's less chance of having uh, inconsistencies with the HBM. So if you have it, why not use it? That's kind of uh, brings me around to the next point. We're going to be doing this on the HBM, um, and we'll go over some setup and strapping stuff that you know. Um, I'll say in the last video there was comments. We'll just look at the cylinder head for a minute, I guess. Uh, about the strapping or the uh, you, you know my uh, setup blocks and everything and my clamps and strapping. Um, it, it it appeared to me that the uh, the bolts were correct, but I did have a lot of angle on the straps. Um, which could potentially cause it to uh, kind of pull and loosen up on me. But they were uh, fairly snug. You know, it's, uh, it wasn't taking that much of a pass. But honestly, I was excited to get that thing running. So I'm going to try and do better. Um, and I appreciate those comments. Stuff to look out for. Um, uh yeah, I appreciate learning. I'm, that's what I'm doing here. I'm learning. Also getting work done, you know. So keep stuff like that coming. Keep it constructive. Um, you know, that kind of stuff is appreciated. Any tips or tricks or anything you want to throw out there in the comments, that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to get you over on the HBM now and uh, see what we can do here. All right, hang tight. Actually, we're not going to get you on the HPM. We're going to bring the cutter over and get it on this surface plate, and we're going to make sure uh, that everything's kind of in line so that we don't have, uh, you know, a carbide hanging down lower than another that's going to cause some weird deviations or larger looking scores in our surface. But aside from that, yeah, I think that's it's uh, that's what we're gonna do. 
All right, guys, so what we got here is a six inch uh, Lovejoy. It's an indexable uh, face mill. So, you know, each one of these has this eccentric screw, uh, which <laughs> half of them don't really want to move that much. So I have to pull that apart then, but I did manage to get it set relatively close uh, initially, uh, establishing that that the uh tapered portion is uh in straight up and down um uh, all the way around so i got that zeroed out uh with the last word indicator <clears throat> and then you know feeler blade down and a half feeler blade just to make sure every single one of these uh inserts is at least touching within a thou and a half. Uh, took a little longer than anticipated. Because like I said, these eccentric screws didn't want to work out. But uh, I think this is an important step in getting the finish that we want. Uh, next important thing is going to be figuring out our feeds and speeds. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. I'll probably just use a calculator, uh, speeds and feeds calculator app or something <clears throat> to get somewhere in the ballpark. But uh, the good thing is we have the two flat spots on the cylinder head that we can kind of, uh, you know, fine tune that with. So that's what we'll do. The uh, face mill is all set up. It's uh, equipped for a draw key, which I haven't made yet, but I. I will, uh, I'll, I'll bolt it in. Uh, not the most ideal situation, but it's what I can do. And the, uh, the taper locks in pretty, pretty tight on that. So I think we'll be fine. Um, we're, we're going to be spinning low RPM cause that's all I have to work with. Uh, but I think it'll be fine. Even with the carbide, um, you can see when they're spinning there a negative rake so it's it should be easy on the machine it should leave for a nice finish so i'm going to go ahead and get this mounted up uh get the part mounted up and i'll i'll bring you back all right hang tight all right guys so we're set up on the mill uh well, what was mentioned last time was about you know these being as close to flat maybe a degree um uh, or, or so above flat so that you're not making your your bolt kind of walk um, and what I did tighten these as I was tightening by hand I was kind of jiggling you know the bolt uh, to make sure it settled in and flattened out on the bottom of the uh, t-slots so this is all set up um, uh, the concern was these kicking out but also uh, it was brought up about the bottom of the uh, T-nut kind of uh, work hardening this T-slot. Now, I will mention that, see, I'll just pull you over here for a minute. One second. Okay. One of the things that Lucas uh, boasted about, at least in their brochures, was these ultra thick T slots and you can see they're I mean they're they're about an inch thick uh, to prevent stuff like that uh, still good practice to try to not mess up your table because this one's in pretty good shape uh, like I said I appreciate the uh, input uh, and try to take it to heart here I think that's a little bit better of a setup uh, more appropriately sized bolts um, correctly stacked blocks Oop, there you go <clears throat> uh, so I have this set up I didn't, didn't make one pass to get these you know these these parts that were that I showed you that were really pushed out uh, I made that at 94 rpm at 28 thou per rev uh, you can kind of see that's kind of a nice nice kind of finish I think for a cylinder head uh, I might knock it back to 18 thou per rev then and try it out. But right now I'm going to fire back up, get you on the tripod, and uh, 
How's this in looking? And we'll take another, maybe 5,000, see what we can clean up. So it might be a little on the coarse side, but it's uh, it's darn close. Like I said, gasket material or surfaces, I believe you want a little teeth to them. That may be a hair too much teeth. So I think we'll do a couple rough passes at the 28, and then when we go to finish up, we're going to kick it back down uh, to our 18th alpha rev. See how that treats us. So let me get you set up. Uh, Get you a good vantage point here and then i'll bring you back uh also uh noteworthy castings are hard to indicate off of so basically just kind of average out uh zero on each one of these and just keep working it back and forth until you find your your sweet spot you know um but the underside is a little more critical but the underside isn't rough cast like this it's uh and it's not pitted up so it should be a lot easier to indicate like I said, we want to take the least amount of material that we can, leaving a nice uh, mating surface. So, all right, hang tight. I'll bring you right back. All right, guys, I got you zoomed in. Uh, I advanced the table uh, ten thousandths inward. And we're gonna, gonna start to run it and see how it does. Should have got a little closer, huh? <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Still not quite touching that mating surface. Uh, that thing was pretty heavily uh, upset. The top portion of that, that machine spot. So that's probably going to take a minute to get flat. I don't want to overdo it though. So I guess slow and steady is going to win the race this time. Got a little cut going. I'll have to move you in a minute because the table's about to hit the tripod, but I'm pretty sure I can find a good spot for you to look. Maybe I'll get the mini tripod and set you up on the table. Probably not a bad thing though. Give you a chance to see what this thing uh, spits out the other side. Yeah, it's still just beating up that upset part. I'd rapid traverse through these uh, kind of dead spots for you, but it's cutting a little more. The way this machine's set up, it uh, whichever way the table's moving, the rapid traverse goes the other direction, which makes sense to get out of the cut. But uh, if you're as patient as I am, it's kind of aggravating if you're not cutting. <laughs> Here. Now we only advanced 10 thou here, so 
Uh, by the looks of it, it's probably going to take 30 or 40 to get that upset part off. a little bit more that whole top's kind of pushed down that yeah, might not be that much a couple more passes maybe main concern with these is that it's flat but I do want to use these to kind of test out uh, where the surface finish is going to end up That's a little on the coarse side yet. So we'll definitely slow it down a little bit for our uh, final pass. Yeah, a little trial and error never hurts. If there's any question, uh, these are uh, Mitsubishi uh, SM, M, and 633 inserts. Come on. Seem to be doing a good job, though. Basically, that's what we're getting. Uh, zoom in here. Getting a little more somewhere. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, slowly getting her cut down. So, uh, it's got to be more of that. I'll probably put you on the uh, mini tripod on the table and run through a couple times. And uh, maybe we'll do a cool music thing, you know? <laughs> so, um,. Uh, yeah, hang tight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you reset up. I'm gonna make this other cut here. So, hang on. now shouldn't take too much more but I think I'm gonna try slowing this down uh, I think I'm gonna try slowing this down here I'm not gonna make you guys watch all that uh, yeah I think I'll try the 18th hour per rev uh, same rpm seems to be doing a good job let's see what we come out with I'd like a little more contact patch than that I actually like the whole thing if I can get it. Uh, and I think I can. So that's plan of attack. I will uh, bring it back with the finished result and then we'll flip the part and indicate it in and get it set up to face the, uh, the business end of this thing. But like I said before, this is a necessary step so that we can build some rigidity into our setup when we actually have a way to set it up. All right, hang tight. All right, guys, so I uh, ended up running this at the uh, the same 94 RPM. I backed her down to uh, 18th hour per rev, and that seemed to do a really, really nice job. I don't know if you can see that. If you can feel it, it's, it's smooth to the touch, and you can just barely catch a nail on it, which is a great gasket. Uh, gasketed surface finish so yeah she's nice and smooth 
like I said, just a little bit of teeth. Uh, I get you closer on that or not. Yeah, so I'm super happy with that. And I think that the mating surface of the cylinder head will be just perfect at that feeding speed. So, um, I do want to check quick. Because the whole point of this exercise things was so that when we set up on the mill it's definitely solid and it's definitely perpendicular I can do a little light test for you There you go. Well, it's not going to work because there's... Hold on. I'm going to find a good spot. Everywhere there's a port. Everywhere. I might not be able to get it for you. Alright, move this. And this isn't exactly a surface plate either. There's a port everywhere. But you can zip you in there. <laughs> Pretty damn close, eh? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it where it's, uh, slide you over here a little bit. I'm happy with it where it's contacting. I don't know if you can see that, but, so that gives us our, our perpendicularity. The, the light test thing's not going to work because everywhere I go there's a damn port. But uh, you get the idea. That's a good first step to establish a, a good solid uh, setup for the next step, which is honestly the more important step. Uh, so I guess I will get set up, face the entire head. Hopefully not too much off it, but face the entire head and uh, go from there. So yeah, we'll uh, get it set up, indicate it in uh, every which way we can, and run through her. And it's got to be perfect because, like I said, the uh, the face mill that I have is an inch short of the entire part. So we're gonna do uh, probably maybe an inch past half. Well, I'm down all the way, so wherever we're at, and we're just gonna have to overlap. But I think we'll be fine uh, going to the detail that we are in uh, every time. I think going through all these details that we're going through to get this set up solid uh, and straight is going to pay off. So let me get set up and I'll bring you back then. All right, guys. So this is the setup. Um, you can see I have some shim stock, as I said, in a couple places. You know, on these, uh, come on, you know, down here, over here. Uh, you know, just some shim stock. Uh, holding these so that they're not torquing the head you know, uh, backwards when I tighten it. Uh, everything's still kind of loose right now. I need to indicate it in. Uh, some big strap clamps up there, minimal rake. Uh, 
I think it's a fairly rigid setup and I think the key to that was you know getting these two uh, flat spots uh, back in plane so I think tonight I'm gonna call it it's getting awful late and I have a lot to do uh, to prepare for my day job um, but yeah I think this is gonna be a good setup we're gonna have a good finish uh, I don't really want to go into surface finish you know RA values and all that uh, right now but uh, I would say typically I think a cast iron head with a non MLS gasket anywhere 40 uh, 40 to 80 uh, UMRA is, is a good surface finish and I don't have a real good way to check that I just have a uh, yeah, one of those little surface finish or surface roughness charts. Um, yeah, but we're right there. Uh, it's smooth, but there's still teeth to prevent, you know, premature gasket blowout. Um, I'll bring you back. Uh, I promise. I'll, I'll record when I face this thing and then we'll take it over to the granite surface plate and we'll inspect it. Uh, make sure we did a good job and then we'll send it off but uh right now i think it's time for me to retire um yeah that's basically that's the setup and i think it's a good one let's see uh strap clamps are just a degree maybe or so um yeah the mounts are here proud of the uh actual work piece uh all my bolts are dead straight i double checked it <laughs> um yeah so i'd love to do this tonight and i want nothing more than to tighten it down indicate it in and and do it tonight but i don't think it's gonna happen so uh i'm gonna cut the video here and we'll bring it back in the next video which will be i guess a part two um finishing this thing out okay um thanks for stopping by don't forget to like comment subscribe uh like i said uh, i try and like i didn't say but i try and look at all the comments and uh, good bad or indifferent you know i try and take the constructive criticism uh and i appreciate it i uh, hope you guys learned something Hopefully I can learn something from you guys. Um, we're all kind of in this together. and uh, Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good approach, though. So, all right. I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.